a stream of blood gets out from Lilith's neck. As Kaoru before her, now is the turn for Rei to lose her head. This is Rebirth. While in Goth, Rei sits over Shinji, fulfilling the sexual fantasies that he might have had in his previous life. Furthermore, they are one, as we can see they are connected. They are no longer individuals, after all, this is instrumentality. Everyone is just one through the LCL. Shinji, who spent the last few episodes of the show and big part of this movie trying to understand what Rei exactly is, knows that even though Rei is his mother's clone, she's also a different individual, who hasn't been able to develop. Therefore, he does understand that the current situation is not right, and will reject her. Rei explains what is this place, the endless sea of LCL, the primordial soup where everyone comes from. This liquid is Lilith's blood, and is vital in giving life to the planet. The LCL is something that contains potential life, but it's not life itself. Thus there is no AT fields or individual shapes. Everything is everyone. There is no pain, nor fear, nor harm, for there is only one. Shinji opens his left hand and lets Misato go. Notice how clean the memento is. It's not tainted in blood, as we saw before, while seeing her with Kaji. He is letting go the perfect Misato he had in his head, the one he thought ought to live for him. He is finally understanding that this Misato never existed, who instead of woman with needs, that committed many mistakes, was angry and impure, but at the same time loved him with all her heart, the Misato he ought to love. The character of Shinji Kari is a very complex one. He wanted to be accepted by everyone while isolating himself, but at the same time he wanted to be accepted by those he isolated from. Furthermore, his happiness relied only on what others think of him. Shinji separates Rei from his individuality, and uses his hand to take Rei's. While doing so, Shinji is accepting Rei as an individual, as her own being, not a doll or a piece of a plant, but a person. His hands found a purpose, help others. He thanks her for showing him the way and for giving him a choice, understanding at the same time that for him to reborn, he will need to kill her. This takes us to a different background, one softer with clear blue waters and a lunar floor, one that reminds us of the more positive ending of episode 26, with its obvious differences. Shinji is resting his head on Rei's leg, a motherhood position in the Japanese culture that you have probably seen in other works, is not sexual anymore, and even that both of them are naked, what are clothes so other than a form of AT fields. Kaoru appears standing in front of them, he's wearing clothes, and he's looking at him from above, even more than Rei. Shinji sees in Kaoru a being far more superior than himself, the perfect one. Kaoru asks him he is alright with AT fields hurting people and himself, to which Shinji replies that he doesn't care. We see how the three of them are standing wearing clothes, Shinji in front of them, far apart facing them. Shinji makes what it seems to be a selfish decision, thinking of his own self-being, but that was exactly what Kaoru and Rei wanted from him, because if someone as weak of a character as Shinji can see this, understand it and accept it and furthermore face it, then there will be hope for humanity. Rei is related to hope, while Kaoru with love. Even if in the English version they pull out a we out of their bots, such we is means translated. It doesn't exist in the original script, which means that both of them are not hope and love, as is intended to be misled. But as I said before, Rei is hope, and Kaoru love. Shinji reaches to the conclusion that that is impossible, just a pretense, there cannot be someone so pure that represents hope or love, that is an illusion. These are ideals, things that move people. Shinji faces his instrumentality tricks, which are to expose the best and the worst of people, black or white, without shades in the middle. Nothing is that simple. But why Shinji perceives Rei as hope and Kaoru as love? Well, when Shinji met Rei for the first time, he was hopeful on getting his father acceptance. And Kaoru appeared in a time in which all seemed lost. All his personal connections were broken, and through love, he was able to reach out to Shinji and make him open up to him. But that's it, basically. 
ideals from life experiences, things that will change as we move on and get other experiences. We change friends, lovers, we see our grandparents die and our children born. Change is inevitable, it's life. Shinji don't want to reject them both but understands that he has to do it for him to be able to reject instrumentality. He feels that his connections with others were real and wants to see them again. Congratulations, kinda, as we see a picture of all of our characters again. But there is no Gendo or Yui like in the original 26. Kaoru is still out of the picture. And we can barely see some of Rei's hair behind Shinji. Rei won't be coming back. She chooses to cease to exist to give him a choice, a chance to reborn, to start anew. Thus, in this new life that Shinji is about to choose, Rei will not be there, because Lilith must die. She let her wings go as her powers disappear. Eva Wang emerges from her eye. The black moon opens up and blood-like liquid is spilled over Lilith's torso reaching her womb as a painful childbirth, and liberates all of the souls she collected before. The planet is again able to host life. Rei and Kaoru explains to Shinji that the individual is the one responsible to grow, without letting others to affect us. It all relies in our self-perception. In other words, you are responsible of your own happiness. Lilith crumbles in her sacrifice within rebirth of humanity, while green crosses spurs across the planet. Eva Wan, or plain Yui at this point, releases the spear of longinus from her mouth, this time with dual spears, probably symbolizing both spears, Adam and Lilith, as they just became one, and with it destroying all of the Celeste replica in the MPs that were used as trigger for instrumentality. By doing so, the MPs die and the remains will serve as a perpetual proof that instrumentality happened. Rei accepts Shinji's wish allowing for everyone to come back with one condition. Anyone can return to human form as long as they are able to imagine themselves within their own heart. This means that whoever is able to face instrumentality in a way similar to how Shinji did, accept their mistakes, overgrown them, and have the will to come back, will be coming back. The final message of Yui is full of egocentrism but also positivism, and if you pay close attention you can hear Anno's voice behind it. Well, not his actual voice, but his direct message of all of the Evangelion stories, one against suicide. As long as there is life, there will be hope for happiness. Instrumentality has ended. Yui folds her wings while quietly turning herself off, and Quantum Ray appears in front of her. Her soul and her cloned body look to one another in the same frame for the first and last time. The dual spear flows symbolizing the endless cycle. As long as the sun, the moon and the earth exist, everything will be just fine. Yui says goodbye to her son. She's going to die. He will live. Because this is natural. Sooner or later everyone should say goodbye to their mothers to live their own lives. After spending the whole story together since episode 1, it's time for Shinji to take his own path. This happens while we see them going apart from each other, Yui going deeper into the LCL, while Shinji emerging to reborn. We are unveiled her real motivations in a flashback, taking us back to those conversations with Kozo. Her goal was to be the sole and eternal proof that humanity existed, becoming herself a true god. All of this ends with Shinji saying goodbye to his mother. Misato's cross appears for one last time, nailed to a piece of wood. The cross is not clean anymore, nor is tainted in blood. It has its dark spots, its shades of grey and Shinji decided to raise this tiny monument on her memory, a proof that she existed. So this also works to let us know that some time has passed since Shinji came back to the surface, as for he had time to do this. How long since Shinji emerged and realized he is by himself, all alone in a deserted beach, with no one around, no food or shelter, only LCL, the remains of Lilith and the MPs? A desolated world for someone that just decided to reborn. A clean world. 
where the stars are shiny and pollution absent. Episode 1 started showing us blue clean waters on the shore. The final sequence of the end of Evangelion shows us red waters, red symbol of pain, a painful ending. Suddenly, while watching the stars, Asuka appears next to Shinji, still wearing her red plaxo, with the injuries left after her fight against the MPEs, scars that she won't be able to forget. We are shown their hands, separated, apart from one another. This distance keeps them safe, but at the same time lifeless, emotionless, empty. We know Shinji has been in the beach for a while before this scene. We don't know if Asuka as well or she just appeared next to him. But given Shinji's reaction, we can assume he just realized she's there. This will be the first time two individuals will interact with each other after instrumentality. The camera angle makes us believe that Shinji is seeing Asuka, but he is actually watching a floating ray in the horizon. Quantum Ray is there to end the story, as we saw her at the beginning, at the distance. Quantum Ray is a messenger of Lily, that is able to be everywhere at once, and travel across time and space. She will always be there, even if he loses the ability to see her. Shinji looks at Asuka, her eyes this time around, while we see communication lines bended, not completely broken, but bended. Shinji is still trying to accept this new reality. It's very surreal. Did it happen? Well, yes, the MPEs remains a proof of it. But still, he doesn't seem to fully understand that he is alive. He proceeds to commit the same mistake he realized was wrong and start choking Asuka. He seems not to want her in this new reality. He now chooses to hurt others before others get the chance to hurt him. Now this particular choking scene is very controversial, not only by how it is shown in the screen, but also on how it was recorded. Ano wasn't happy on how either Ogata as Shinji or Miyamura as Asuka sounded in the first recording. It just didn't feel believable. So he brought both in for re-recording and asked Miyamura to lie on the floor while Ogata above her would proceed to choke her, very similar to the image we see on screen. Ogata felt so much pressure from Ano that actually squeezed Miyamura's neck so hard that left her speechless for the rest of the day. This is the reason why Miyamura almost left her career and caused big surprise among fans when it was announced that she would be coming back to reprise her role as Asuka's voice in Reveal years later. Now it is important to understand that as Ray said early, everyone should go through their own instrumentality. Asuka did too. One different from Shinji's, even if they share some of it. So even if this film doesn't show us Asuka's journeys entirely, as we only get to witness Shinji's, we can only assume that she learned something out of it, as for her reaction towards Shinji is one of love, touching his face. Asuka doesn't reject Shinji anymore. She can see he's in pain and decides to show him some affection. He cries for a while in a position similar of that one we saw earlier between Shinji and Rei, but now Shinji is taking the female role, while Asuka taking the male one. Asuka doesn't lose it. She's very well aware of what she's doing and what is happening. She sees him, and without rejecting him, she says, how disgusting. But did she, though? The exact phrase in Japanese is, one that doesn't have a direct English translation given the structure, roots, and essence of the Japanese language, so it's ambiguous. In Spanish has been translated as, I don't like this feeling. The truth is that this phrase was corrected from the original script, which was this, which roughly means, I won't ever leave myself be killed by someone like you. But Miyamura wasn't able to say exactly as Ano wanted. So he looked for alternatives and casually asked her, his employee, to imagine a man crawling in her bed and instead of raping her, he just, if that would happen, then what would she say? She replied, and recognizes that it could mean many things, such as disgusting, odd, freaky, or creepy. So I stick with it. And thus we had this very ambiguous expression as the final line of this story. Coming back from instrumentality doesn't mean to reset your previous self. 
your experiences will still be present. Your memory is untouched. It's up to you to grow and rise to become a better person. From Asuka's perspective, she just has awakened from a nightmare. She's physically destroyed, her arms slit in two, still healing, and lost an eye. Her welcoming by Shinji is one of aggression, but she doesn't want it that way. It needs to be different. This time she won't be rejecting him. But she won't be a doll, a puppet, for his desires either, but an equal that won't let him to kill her. Asuka has grown up first, before Shinji did. This final ending is titled, I Need You, which means that both Asuka and Shinji need one another. Are they in love with each other? I don't think so. What I see here is more of the hedgehog dilemma, one of the main themes in New Genesis Evangelion. Shinji and Asuka may not have had a happily ever after, but within the spirit of this tragedy, they are both alive and together, and they will have the chance to change, understand one another, and grow together in a new world. Still here? Then that means that you watched the video all the way to the end, and for that, I thank you. I hope you enjoyed not only this last episode, but the other seven of my analysis series on the end of Evangelion. It took way longer than I projected over eight months in the making. So you may be wondering, what is next for this channel? After all, the end of Evangelion is the most important part of all of Evangelion's stories. There is nothing else to cover. Well, if that is what you're thinking, you sir are wrong, very wrong. I still have many analyses to make regarding Evangelion, and I have barely touched anything regarding Rebuild. So there is enough material still to cover. So if you are here for the Evangelion content, worries not my friend, for there is much more to come. But make sense you take long time on making these videos. I want one each day. Well, that is impossible, but it's true that I can speed them up a bit. You see, this channel is a hobby of mine and barely produces any income. So I just do videos in my spare time. As the channel grows and I get more income from this channel, I will spend more time making videos. And in order for the channel to grow, that means I have to expand, look for new audiences, new ground. But for that, I need to find something that catches my imagination as much as Evangelion does. Something that I find passion on doing, reading, and watching. And I'm happy to report that I have finally found it. Very soon, I will be starting a series on a very popular story that I know by a fact many of you are very looking forward to. There is also something that I do weekly on my Discord that I might bring to the YouTube channel sooner than later. If you haven't joined the Discord, the link is in the description section. Again guys, thanks for all the support over all this time, months, even years. I hope you keep enjoying the vids. If you have any suggestions or comments, they are always welcome. I try to keep up with most of them. And finally, I wish you all a wonderful day.